Hello everybody and welcome to Miss Val's Storytime. I'm Miss Val and I'm a librarian at the Leisha and Mason Beakley Community Library in New Hartford, Connecticut. And this, my friends, is my very first YouTube Storytime. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. Today, I'm going to read two books about camping, and then we're going to do a craft that is related to the books. So pay real good attention when I'm reading, because the craft is going to be about something that is in both of the stories. Okay, let's get started. So the first book about camping that we're going to read is called A Camping Spree with Mr. McGee. And this book is written by Chris Van Dusen. Early one morning at 7.03, Mr. McGee and his little dog, Dee, packed up the camper and hitched up the load, hopped in the rambler, and then hit the road. They drove to the mountains far from the sea for two nights of camping, or possibly three. See, some people camp in tents, but Mr. McGee and his dog are going to camp in a camper. There's nothing like camping, said Mr. McGee. I know you will love it. Just wait and see. The views are fantastic. There's hardly a sound. Aside from the wildlife, there's no one around. And the air is so sweet, you'll sleep like a log, said Mr. McGee to his small spotted dog. A few hours later, they took a sharp right and found a great spot to lay camp for the night. It was high on a hill with a beautiful view of Mount Adams, Mount Lincoln, and Jefferson, too. But perhaps the most wonderful feature of all was the brook that ran over a steep waterfall. While Dee gathered pine cones and branches and logs, McGee made a campfire and cooked some hot dogs. And as the sun set behind far distant knolls, they sat roasting marshmallows over the coals. As the embers went out, they felt tired and dozy, so they climbed in their bunk beds all comfy and cozy. But while they were falling asleep without care, along came a stumbling, bumbling bear. A kindly old bear, whose sight wasn't so clear, he couldn't see far and he couldn't see near. But he could smell marshmallows, sticky and sweet. This smell made him hungry. He wanted a treat. Well, he sniffed out the place where the marshmallows lay, but the car and the camper were in the bear's way. Yet that didn't stop that sneaky old snitch. He simply tried squeezing right under the hitch. And as he was shimmering into the gap, he pushed up the hitch, which let go with a snap. Now that camper and car were untied. They started to roll down the rocky hillside. The car bounced away on the old logging road while the camper was heading to where the stream flowed. It flew down the hill in a wild, bumpy ride with Dee and McGee sleeping soundly inside. They were snoring and snoozing, enjoying a dream when splash went the camper right into the stream. The splash shook the camper. They bumped out of bed. Now what in the world was that? McGee said. And when he looked out and saw where they were, his hair stood on end, and so did Dee's fur. They were caught in the rapids, but that wasn't all. They were headed smack dab for that big waterfall. Well, Dee and McGee both started to quiver as faster and faster they headed down river. But just when they thought they'd fall over the edge, their camper got stuck on a rock at the ledge. So there they were stranded, McGee and his pup, on the top of a waterfall 50 feet up. Meanwhile, that nearsighted bear from before 
was searching for one little marshmallow more. When lo and behold, as if out of a dream, he spied something sweet floating over the stream. But what the bear thought was a marshmallow treat was really the hitch and not something to eat. The bear was determined to capture his prize, so he jumped in the water right up to his thighs. He splashed through the stream to the edge of the fall and snatched up the trailer hitch, camper and all. Dee felt a tug and McGee heard a knock as the bear pulled the camper right off of the rock. Well, he dragged them both all the way back to the bank when he realized the hitch was not sweet, but quite rank. He spit out the hitch and he left in dismay. While McGee and Dee's camper again rolled away, it flew down the path with a jolt and a jar and stopped in some bushes right next to the car. Well, that is very lucky. Dee popped her head out. McGee looked out, too. Had they really stopped rolling? Could it be true? At last, things were quiet and peaceful and still. They hooked up the hitch and drove off down the hill. And on the way home, McGee said to Dee, that trip wasn't quite what I thought it would be. So when they got home, with the sky turning red, they decided to camp in the backyard instead. And there they are with their camper and their campfire and their marshmallows right in the safe backyard. And that is the end of this story. So the next one that I'm going to read is a story about camping that takes place in the cold. And it is called Tacky Goes to Camp written by Helen Lester and illustrated by Lynn Mussinger. And if you haven't noticed, Tacky is a penguin. It didn't exactly look like summer camp, but then summer didn't look exactly like summer in nice icy land. And yet, here were goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect, and tacky at Camp Whoopi Hana. Goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect had packed carefully. They brought things like sleeping bags and flashlights and a first aid kit and, and a shovel. But tacky brought a TV and pizza and cookies and games and roller skates, which doesn't make a lot of sense when you go camping. Well, they all wore nifty uniforms with their names on them. And every night they slept in real tents. How campy. At Whoopi Hana, their days were filled with wonderful activities like rock climbing and swimming and archery. Arts and crafts. And Tacky's personal favorite was a game he invented called Tippy Canoe and Tacky Too. It's a good thing penguins like cold water. But the best activity of all came one evening. It was called Sleep Under the Stars. They sang camp songs. And then it was time to make some s'mores, which are roasted marshmallows and chocolate, smashed between two graham crackers. Yum! Well, finally, just before bedtime, it was scary story time. Ooh! Goodly and Lovely told a tale called Gotcha. Angel and Neatly came up with the creeping, crawling plant, even scarier. Perfect followed with a story called the Whooping Wubba Wubba Bird, which was so scary that the penguins almost couldn't even listen. And then it was Tacky's turn. And he began, 
Once upon a time, the penguins were gathered around the campfire when they heard a thud, 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 and a great growly voice called out, Beware the bear! Well, Tacky's companion shivered a little, and the voice came closer, Beware the bear! And closer, Beware the bear! They shut their eyes tight, and they waited. And then, said Tacky, a bear thudded up to the penguins and announced, How de do? My name is Beware. Beware the bear, get it? Yuck, 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 the end. Well, scary story time ended up on a not-so-scary note. But Tacky wanted to eat more s'mores while all the other penguins crawled into their sleeping bags to go to sleep. So he ate more and more s'mores. And then he ended up leaving all the leftovers under his sleeping bag because he just couldn't quite finish them all. Much, much later, well after midnight, as the penguins slumbered, there came a thud, 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 and a great growly voice boomed out, Beware the bear! Well, up shot goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect. And what they saw was a bear, a real bear to beware of. Mmm, something smells yummy, growled the bear. And he helped himself to one marshmallow and chocolate and graham crackers, and then he gobbled up the guitar, and he even swallowed the entire fire log. Not yummy he bellowed, and I'm still hungry in my tummy. Well, he stood over goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect, and he looked very hungry. The penguins always did everything in a group, and what they did this time was run, but not Tacky. Wake up, Tacky, wake up! But Tacky wouldn't be woken up. Come on, Tacky, wake up, they repeated. And at last, he kicked his feet and he popped up. Well, all the leftover marshmallows were stuck to Tacky's sleeping bag, and it made him look like a really scary, graham crackery, chocolatey, marshmallowy face. Gadzooks! gasped the bear. What a horrid looking thing. It was huge, with mean eyes and green skin and webbed feet because penguins have webbed feet. Well, the bear backed away, and Tacky waddled forward, calling, Want some more? Well, the bear backed farther, falling off of, over a log, and Tacky continued waddling forward, Want some more? Well, the terrified bear cried out, No more! I don't want some more! No more! I'm out of here, yelped the bear, and he got out of there, fast. And as he sped off, he thought to himself, that was pretty embarrassing, but at least I'll have a scary story to tell around my campfire tonight. Well, goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect all hugged Tacky, and they didn't even mind getting sticky. Tacky was an odd bird, but a nice bird to have around. And that's the end of Tacky Goes to Camp. So stay tuned for the craft. Okay, so this is part two of our story time video today. And I told you that we were going to be making a craft of something that is in both stories. And in both stories there is a campfire. So this is what we'll be making today. And this is what we need. I've already cut up little pieces of tissue paper of different colors, campfire colors, red, yellow, orange, and they're already cut up in there. I'm using a seven inch paper plate. I'm using some sticks that you can find outside that you've broken up. 
And I've got about 13 small stones here that will fit around the paper plate. You can adjust that if you're using a different size of plate. We're going to need some regular school glue. We're going to need some craft glue, which you can get at Michael's. And it's tacky glue and it works very well. We're going to need some more tissue paper that I'm going to cut up later. A nine inch cup, this is actually three and a half inches across, okay, because that will fit perfectly into the seven inch plate. And last but not least, we'll need a flickering tea light, which you can get at Ocean State Job Lot or any dollar store. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our plate and we're going to use the tacky glue. Now I have the tacky glue sitting upside down in here because it's easier if it's all come down to the top to use. So you're going to need a bunch of tacky glue. Just make a nice thick circle around the outside of the plate like so. And then we're going to take our stones and we're going to stick them and don't worry the tacky glue will dry clear so you won't see it but you need a good amount because it takes a good amount of glue to stick stones on anything so we're just going to stick all these stones around I've chosen some that I found outside the library and we're almost done. I've got a few extra here which I will use for something else maybe, but not this. Use this big one. So there we go. Now we're going to set this aside for now. And we're going to take our cup, our plastic cup. Now for this, we're going to use the school glue and I'm just going to put the glue on a little bit of the cup. I'm using a brush. You don't need to use a brush, but a brush, a paintbrush makes it easy to spread it very thinly around the cup. Okay. I would suggest only doing half the cup at a time because it'll tend to get a little messy. Put that down there for a minute. Now we're going to take our pieces of cut tissue paper, all the colors of the campfire, and we're going to just stick them randomly. And you can cut any shapes that you want, whatever you feel like doing, um, just to make it look interesting because when the light is flickering later on, it's going to look just like a campfire, hopefully. So and tissue paper tends to stick to your fingers. So that's why we're only doing half of the cup first because then you can actually hold on to the part with the tissue paper and put glue on the other half of the cup. Like so. Not too much. We're going to take the brush and we're just going to spread it around a little. You can also use two-sided tape for this if you like. I, I prefer to use the glue, um, and we're just going to stick the, paper, the tissue paper on with different colors, just like we did on the other side. So I'm going to use some yellow over here, and we've got some more red, and we've got some orange that I can use. And it will get a little sticky and messy, but that is what crafts are all about. Now, for the top of the fire, because this is going to be your fire, what we're going to do is take some more tissue paper of different colors that work in a campfire. I've got some orange and some red, and I'm just going to cut down a thick strip like this. So I've gotten two at a time. What we're going to do is just twist it in the middle. And this is going to become a flame. You need a little bit of school glue on top of your campfire cup. And 
and we're going to crinkle it up just like a campfire and stick it right on there. I'm going to take the other one, twist it up a little, crinkle it up, stick it on, push it down so it'll stick well. You can use the tacky glue for this too. I don't think it's really that necessary. You can use the Elmer's school glue just as easily for this part. I'm going to put another one on there, maybe another red one. Just cut the strip of tissue paper like this, twist it in the center, bend it up and crinkle it up a bit, and put it right there and push down to stick on top of the fire. Now, this is pretty well stuck with the tacky glue. They're not perfectly stuck yet, but it doesn't take tacky glue long to work. Now we need this most important part here, the tea light. Put the tea light right in the center of your plate. Then you're going to take your campfire and you're going to fit it right on top. Take some broken sticks that you've collected from outside and just place them around. And there you've got your campfire. So thank you so much for joining me this week, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.